Good evening, class. Thank you for joining us today. Uh, but first of all, I just want to thank the Abishta, uh, our God, the inoriginate, most illustrious, most illuminative, the illimitable being from an limited source in an limited way. Uh, pillar of all pillars and giants of all giants who has allowed us to meet again in these very powerful discussions uh, where we are sharing the knowledge about creation. And, and I just want to declare that we, we know nothing, but the little that we have, we can just share. And the idea is to bring you know, books without men to, to, to men without books. That has been the idea. Uh, since we started these programs and and the I just want to emphasize that whatever whatever we are doing uh, the interpretation is between the soul and the body so so whatever we're doing this in these researches in these discussions in these you know classes we are trying to understand the soul and the body and in most cases, we would use a Albert Einstein is a law of relativity. How does your soul relate to the body? So the topic today is, is a spiritual schizophrenia or mass psychosis, mind or like mind control, or I've said mendicide. What are we saying on that? When the human mind is controlled or you know, altered by some psychological techniques. So this can this can refer, like I've said, to the soul of, a, of an individual and and his or her body, the body, and and this mind control and this mass psychosis. Most of it is created by governments. Most of it is created by totalitarians uh, or in autocratic societies or autocratic companies or using autocratic leadership styles. They they cushion fear. They use the reign of terror to threaten and make sure that their followers are very much afraid of them. And so even the, the village headsman, any person can use it. Once that person is a, a totalitarian, that's the tools they use to cushion fear into the followers so that they are very much afraid. So here we are referring to the body. The body can be, can be a government that can cushion fear to the soul. Because of issues like stress, you know, depression, the body can do it. Any any government, the body is a government. The village head is the government. The teacher can be government. The head of a school can be government. Any any can be any government which is totalitarian can utilize a mass psychosis to cushion fear into the followers. But you know, you know, summarily, I can just say the Bosham <clears throat> you know, the the Bosham Tov. One said, if a man empties his purse into his head, if you have a purse, according to the Bosham proof, and you empty that purse in your head, that will banish all the fear. And no man can take it away from you. So the Bosham is talking about, you know, you know, learning to equip yourself with knowledge, with the right knowledge. The right, the right knowledge will banish all the fear. So, because education is, is transformational. It changes lives. That is why people work so hard to become very educated. So, and education was and is still the American dream, and this and uh, the dream of any any parent. Uh, so that when someone is educated, that banishes away fear. You know, there's a story in the Bible, very interesting. It's, it's on Numbers thirteen verse thirty three, where emissaries were sent by Moshe, uh, Moses to go and spy the city of Jericho. And when they came back, what did they say? They said, we were like grasshoppers. We were like grass. We must madness, must psychosis, must fear. We were like grasshoppers. In the eyes of the, 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 the people of Jericho. So, can you imagine? If we are only low in our eyes and regard ourselves as non-entities, as subjects, what do you think our adversaries will do? Our adversaries, our adversaries will think the same. And treat on us. So, that's the top mass psychosis, mass madness, mass fear, spiritual schizophrenia. 
So in sociology, I'm not a sociologist, I'm not a psychologist, but I've just read about it. So in sociology and psychology, mass psychosis is a phenomenon that, you know, transmit collective illusions or, or threats, collection, you know, collective fear with regard to imaginary illusions or delusions. So, so this topic is very important. You know, how do you deal with that? How do you punish fear? How can you survive in a world being driven by mass psychosis? You know, you see people running, a group of people running away. You are walking. You don't know what's happening. You join them. You run away. That's mass psychosis. People are just running away. You join them. But don't know what's happening. Mass psychosis. How can that be treated? And and uh, 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 you know, understand that it is like like men decide. Both men decide to profess that masses must give up their freedom and cede the control of all aspects to the ruling elite. They must relinquish their capacity to be self-reliant individuals who are responsible for their own lives and become submissive to their obedient uh, and become obedient. They become obedient subjects to their decision-making, you know, you know, totalitarians. So the guidance of mass psychosis enforces strict conformity and requires a blind obedience from the citizen. So you see, see what happens. So I'll give an example here, an analog. So one day Hitler, I'm trying to, ex to explain, to give an analog so that people understand in this class what we mean by mass psychosis. So one day Hitler, Adolf Hitler, you know Adolf Hitler of Germany, what they called him Führer or Chancellor of Germany uh, during the Second World War. Hitler brought a hen, a, a hen, a chicken, to Parliament, and in front of all the you know the, the, parliamentar the parliamentarians, he started plucking uh, its feathers. Cons consequently, plucking its, its feathers of the chicken, and the hen started whining, crying, quack, 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 with pain. But Hitler did not care and plucked all the feathers and threw the hen on the floor. While it's all the parliamentarians were, were watching, no one said to Hitler, you cannot do that. You can't do that, sir. Because of mass madness, because of mass fear, because of mass psychosis, you can't do that. Pertaining to the body. The body can take someone to, 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 to commit a sin. The soul can't say you can't do that, say, because the body thinks the earth, the, the body thinks, you know, he's, he's from the earth, and the, he's, so the earth is, he's, he dominates the earth, and the soul is coming from heaven, so the soul cannot say anything to the body. And the soul is, the, the soul is, is afraid. Mass psychosis. So Hitler plucked all the feather, feathers of that, of that hen, and uh, after that, he threw it on the ground, threw it to the, to the floor. Then he brought some 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 grains from his pocket, and he started to walk, you know, by sprinkling the, the grain to the chicken. And the chicken was following the hen was following him. <clears throat> and then he said, at the end, he said, "What did you see? What did you learn, Hitler? What did you say?" So so he then explained that the people of democratic countries are like this hen. Take, take the people of any 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 nation, be, nation be it in a totalitarian, you know, uh, governments or whatever. So he said the people in such countries, democratic countries, initially their leaders rob them completely of their resources, rob them completely and make them absolutely absolutely handicapped. They after when they. Their governments, when their leaders uh, make them handicap, after which they give a nominal relief, and thereby become very well wishers. They will clap and say, "Hitler, the Führer is the best," but he was plucking all the resources from them. And then, uh, after which, then they will say, "Yeah, this is good." So the massive, they are thirsty after truth. They turn aside from evidence that is not their state. That's not their, their test. P 
referring to deify error. If error suggests them, they are okay. But they are afraid. They are afraid of reign of terror. They are, they, they, but they are cushioned with threats. So whoever can supply with uh, with you no know, sound truth, with sound knowledge, is an, is a, to them is an enemy. That person is an enemy. And, and what you need to understand is that disease of the body can spread through a population and reach uh, epidemic promotions or epidemic pro, uh, proportions. But so too, remember, so too can the disease of the mind. During a mass psychosis, madness becomes the norm in a society and delusionary beliefs. This belief spread like a contagion. But as delusions can take many forms, and madness can manifest in countless ways, the specific manner in which a mass psychosis unfolds would differ based on the historical or cultural background. Like, you know, some of us from, <laughs> from the villages. We grew up being told that there were spooks, Jidoma, or there were you know, spooks, or what of those things. We, 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 have, we have never seen those things, but they were whole, you know, collective clan. We're afraid of those things. Mass, mass madness. Shidoma, spooks, goblins. The whole village is talking about that. No one saw even the single one. Mass, mass madness. People are just mad. Is that true? No one has verified that. Now, when truth comes to verify and authenticate and validate, people don't want it. But they want to be, to, it's true to remain in fear. You see? And, 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 and more often than not, the people who are the hatchers, who are the fathers of mass psychosis are totalitar totalitarians. You know, they use totalitarianism. So what is totalitarianism? It's a modern phenomena of total centralized state of power coupled with oblit obliteration of individual human rights. You are not allowed to think in it in, in the a totalized you know state. There are those in power who can think for you. We think for you. We eat for you. We drink for you. We rule for you. Don't don't worry about that. Don't worry about thinking. We we'll think for you. And the objectives are you know they they are not known. So in a totalitarian society, the population is divided into two groups: the rulers and the ruled. Uh, uh, like in this case, in our in our topic, like like our, our objective is we are talking about we are addressing the soul and the body. So in a totalitarian state where the body dominates the soul, the soul can, can't say anything. The soul is submissive, subservient, and 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 the body, which is the ruler, uh, is elevated to a god-like you know, status, which is diametrically opposite to our nature. Diametrically opposite. You know, the totalitarians, they elevate themselves to a godlike status, like the body, when the body is dominating the soul. So, we, we know we're imperfect human beings. So, the masses, on the other hand, are transformed into the dependent subjects of these pathological rulers, of the pathological body, and take on a psychologically regressed and childlike status. They are now children. They, they will just take a childlike status. In a totally totalitarian, you know, environment. <laughs> so the social transformation that unfolds under totalitarianism is built upon and sustained by delusions. What is what are delusions? An erroneous belief or mistaken or unfounded opinion or idea. For only deluded men and women regress to the childlike status of obedient and submissive subjects and hand over complete control to the totalitarians or politicians and bureaucracy. You see, that's what happens in a, in a, in a, in a mass psychosis. Bureaucracy, what are, what are bureaucrats? Administrative official or administrative officials, they believe that they possess all the, all the knowledge. They believe that they possess all the wisdom and acumen to completely control a society in a top-down manner. And only when under the spell of delusions would anyone believe that they will be rich and safer from danger. What is that? <laughs> but, but, uh, uh, let's say, what triggers mass psychosis? 
What triggers that? What triggers the massacres of totalitarianism, or authoritarianism, absolutism, and Caesarean? Some called Caesarean. What causes that? The mass madness, the collective fear. We, 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 the, 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 in the preceding, you know, explanation was talking about Hitler. Was plucking the feathers from a chicken. People were, were watching. No one said, Hitler, you can't do that. What's of fear? They're all frozen in fear. They can't say anything. You see? So the individuals that make up this class are politicians, bureaucracy, see, to augment their power with the delusion so that they can, you know, they should control or dominate a society. When a ruling elite becomes possessed by a political ideology of this sort, be it communism, be it fascism, be it technocracy, the next step is to induce fear into a population, to accept what they, they think, what they want. Those are called, what is called mass psychosis of totalitarianism. So, all men decide. Men decide the killing of the mind of an individual the killing of the mind or the killing of the mind of an individual by sowing seeds of fear and they know that when when an individual is flooded with the negative emotions such as a fear you know or anxiety he or she is very susceptible to to descend into abs into delusions of madness she becomes desperate and when a person is desperate, she or he looks for every advice, hoping to find a good fortune. Those seeds of fear would have been sown into him. The, 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 the upstairs here, there's nothing now. They just can't run. Because they're paralyzed. So fear is being used to, to, to prime a population for men decide. They use propaganda to spread misinformation and to promote confusion with respect to the source of the threats and the nature of the crisis to some extent you know the totalitarians the bureaucrats they use the contradictory reports non-sensical information and even blatant lies because the more they confuse the people the more they confuse the people the, the less the, <laughs> is capable of the communication to verify the truth they're confused. They promise things that they will never, they will never achieve, and they've never achieved. See, because you cannot verify. You aren't allowed to verify. So the big lie and monotonously repeated nonsense. You have more emotional appeal to the mass than logic and reason. While the mass are still searching for a reasonable counter argument for what they promised last time, they bring another lie. They will, they will assault the population. They assault the mass with another, with another life. Mass psychosis, mass madness, spiritual schizophrenia, spiritual madness. No one verifies. And, and this happens even to yourself. There. Even to myself, my body and my soul. The body is dominating into sins. The soul can't even ask to say, boss, boss the, no, when the soul comes from heaven, and, and, and the soul is in this body, you know, the body becomes a government controlling people, controlling the soul. You can't say no. So the relationship is between the, it could, it could be between the body and the soul. The village, the village head and his people, it could be the government, it could be any other organization where totalitarians want to control people by cushioning wrong propaganda. They are propagandists. They lie. So, and and how do they do, how do they do it? We can take a further step uh, and just, by, by me already, look at the approach that the Roman Catholic used uh, to in, introduce or to induce totalitarian psychosis. So, to control the congregants, the Roman Catholic introduced what was called Index Librorum Prohibitorium. Let me repeat this. Index Librorum 
Prohibitorium, in Latin index of forbidden books to control the, the masses in Rome. This was a list of books that were, that were once forbidden by the Roman Catholic Church. Uh, the reasons were that, you know, they were dangerous to, to the faith or morals of the Roman Church. So people were not allowed to access them. So they were removed from the Bible. I think 14 of them were removed from the Bible so that people get controlled. That's, that's how they do it. Simple. You, you, so these books were prohibited because they, they, they putatively con uh, contained material considered dangerous or contrary to the faith or morals of the reader. So they said, don't read these books. You know, most of them were removed from the Bible so that they can control. But so doing, the isolated victims, the isolated would be readers, it disrupt normal social interactions to, the, to these books. They could not access the books, so they were being controlled. Know this, don't know this. So like many other wild species, you, you know it from, from, from home, that elephants, species like elephants, you know, dogs, human beings are more easily conditioned into new patterns of thought and behavior when they're isolated from the truth. You know, when they're isolated from the truth, they can be, con you can condition them. You know, the sort of the, the experiment that was done by Pavlo. So they now resorted to never ending streams of propaganda and turn mind, and then turn the minds once capable of rational thought into playhouses of irrational forces and with the chaos swelling around them. They are now big elephants in circus. You'd wonder how big that, you know, those elephants in circus, huge, elephantine, big. But someone is, is, is you know, holding that elephant with a leash, a, a two-year-old boy. So with that, now the masses must give up their freedom and see the control of aspects of life or all aspects of life to the ruling elite. They must relinquish their capacity to be sovereign individuals who are responsible, directly responsible for their own lives and become submissive and obedient subjects. The soul must be obedient to the body. And it's, it's horrific. At the end of, at the, end of the life, you, you cannot achieve anything. The soul not go to heaven. Because the body is, 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 is causing the soul to be sub subservient and submissive. Master causes all the parts of the body. They do whatever they want. So, the masses, in other words, must descend into the delusions of the totalitarian psychosis. Like I've said, they, they enforce strict conformity, strict adherence, and requiring a blind obedience from the citizenry. That's to follow blindly. So, what does the Torah say? How can we effectuate a cure? How can you effectuate a cure? It's very, very, very difficult to convince someone who is in mass psychosis, to convince someone who is sleepy with a why that the rainfall is coming. It's very difficult. You know, scientists have, have proven it. It's very difficult because they'll think this is mad. This is total madness. So, but Shlomo Amalek, uh, Solomon, the son of King David, is called Shlomo Amalek. You know, you know, uh, in the Midrash, he had this to say when, when you're trying to convince someone to awaken someone from this, you know, slumber. Solomon he, uh, he said, it's, you know, concerning this nature of a person who doesn't want to know the truth. He called them Racha, a lazy person who does not know the truth. So he says, Solomon, when a lazy person is told that the your rabbi has come to the nearby town, to, to try to take someone from mass psychosis, from mass madness, from mass fear. If you tell them that your rabbi is in the town, nearby town, go to the town and learn Torah and liberate your mind and emancipate your mind. Go and study the Torah. If you say that to that person, you will say, I fear meeting up with a lion on the way. I'm, I, I fear a lion. Go and read, go and study, go and register. I'm afraid. Now, if you say now, the rabbi is read your neighborhood, go to start. The rabbi is in your neighborhood, go and start. 
you say, I'm concerned that they may be, that lion may be lurking, lying uh, through the streets. <sighs> then if you say that he is now in your house, read, study, he has come in your house to start to, 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 to give you information, to furnish you, to emancipate, to equip you with knowledge, so that you, you stay away from mass psychosis. In, he's now in your house. You say, I go to him. If I go to him, I'll find the door locked. You find the door locked? Yeah, the door will be locked when I go to him. And when you say, I, I've, I've unlocked the door. Now, the rabbi is in the, in the, in the house. Now, go inside. I've unlocked the door. You will say, I wish to sleep a bit. I want to sleep just a bit. You see, finally, you will never learn. And at that point, it becomes clear that it's not easy to banish fear. It's not easy to help people banish fear so that they have freedom. So it's very difficult to emancipate a person, a person who is a lunatic, to say, take this panacea. So Solomon was advocating for self-knowledge and study. And he said, study is the key to the knowledge of everything that exists. You see? So by understanding who we truly are inside, we can understand the experience of others. Who we are, what, what, what position, what, what is your role, what is your, the, the role of your soul? When we acquire this kind of knowledge on our own, by our own efforts, and our own experience in this way, there's no need to believe or theorize. For having this knowledge of this truth, you can emancipate yourself. You can liberate yourself from mass, from mass madness. But the only panacea, the only antidote that banishes fear, fear of spooks, jidomas, fear of demons, fear of totalitarians, fear of lions, fear of everything, the only antidote is the word of God. Is the word of God. So this kind of knowledge is responsible and is possible for anyone. It does not matter what one believes in or where one comes from. You can be devoutly religious or deeply religious, yet acquire the personal experience, uh, the personal knowledge which exists beyond the physical senses. You know, furthermore, it is not necessary to belong to any group or promise anyone anything. And even more scandalous, you don't need to pay anyone anything, any money to have that knowledge, to banish uh, uh, spiritual schizophrenia. Despite the outrageous, you know, demands of thousands of spiritual groups and teachers, you can experience the truth even if you are financially poor. Even if your bank account is weak, it's not fat, it's thin. The truth, if you have this truth, Jesus said you will know the truth and that truth will set you free. And also, my emphasis, I just want to emphasize that as a fire is the direct cause of cooking. So knowledge and not any other form of discipline is the direct cause of liberation. For liberation cannot be attained without knowledge. You need knowledge to liberate. That's what the Baal Shem Tov said. You need to take your purse and put your purse in your head. When you, this, was, this happened when the student came to the Baal Shem Tov and said, I have fear. I have mass psychosis. I'm afraid. I have anxiety. I have stress. I have depression. The Baal Shem Tov said, take that purse you have and put it in your head. For the liberation cannot be attained without knowledge. So, so uh, there are so many books written about fear, you know, like the, the doctrine of double effect. There are so many books around fear, around banishing fear. And fear is the only, only proven thing in this world that causes mass psychosis. And you need information that counters the propaganda and should be spread as far and as wide as possible. For truth is more powerful than fiction. 
and the false fies. It punishes false. So, so that's that's according to Shlomo Amalek. The only antidote most powerful is knowledge, the right knowledge, the right information. With that, you can know with spooks. You do machine gun to Lisa. You know we're afraid of spooks in the villages. Some people froze. They can't even. They can't even. They, they you know they can't even. even some are afraid of lightning when it's raining. They dive straight under the blankets. But that's, that's fear. As if no one will not die. Everyone will die. So, how do you emancipate yourself? How do you banish fear? How do you, how do you treat? How do you heal? What antidote can you use to heal yourself from mass madness, from mass, mass fear, group of fear? They will tell you, you die. There's nothing like that. There's nothing like that. And the death has been used as a weapon of mass destruction. Death statements. And you know what? And death is nothing else but a departure. You are departing from, from this life into another life. Well, science, science is it that energy cannot be created and energy cannot be destroyed. So there's nothing like death. It's a transformation from this life to that, to that life. But people use that as a weapon of mass destruction to, to control. Say people die, so then everyone will die. So that's it. Thank you so much for our lecture on mass psychosis, spiritual schizophrenia, where it is, is can, this can be applied, this lecture can be applied anywhere in life, be it your body and your soul, be it in the villages, be it at home with your wife, be it at home with your children, be it a, a government institute, be it in a grocery store, be it at work, be it a church institution, it applies. So it, it's something that is a one size fits all. Let's wake up. Thank you so much for coming to this lecture. Amen, amen, amen. <laughs>